Hello, what's up? Cedric here, CRS and Commentary, Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And we're going to just jump on into this because there's so much wrestling that we need to watch. G1 had their sixth day, but the guy didn't post the fifth day, but the fifth day is up there, so we got to watch the fifth day and the sixth day. And we've watched Slammiversary, and we're going to review that later on after I wake up. <laughs> Two... 2.57 p.m. So, okay, let's get into this for those that are still here. So, we start off with, uh, well, this is SmackDown-ish, uh, July 26th. I think that was the date. Uh, so, Bloodline Business. So, Tonga Loa has an eye injury. And Nick Aldis informs them that they cannot compete in the tag team gauntlet tournament. So, Tonga Tonga, he steps up in a threatening way, declaring that they're not forfeiting nothing. And so Solo pauses Tama and mentions that they have Jacob Fatu and he'll team with Tama Tonga. And I'm sitting here like, I don't ever recall anywhere in town that they've teamed up. But, you know, I mean, they could have multiple times I've never known. But I'm like, this will be interesting. But I know Tama Tonga can team up with anyone and make it like a, a will or a machine. So all this agrees. And then he leaves and Sokoa tells Jacob to bring the titles back home. Okay. And at first I was suspecting that maybe Tonga Loa is kind of being punished or something. They didn't want him or something, but that, that was my notes. I had a, about a paragraph of this, but when it was showing the uh, replay of last week's uh, end event attack, Tonga Loa was holding his eye and the eye that he was holding was, was his right eye, the one that was bandaged and stuff. So, okay. But I'm going to tell you, I liked how, and I don't know if anyone saw this, but when he when Nick Aldis mentioned that Tonga Loa has an eye injury, he kind of, Tonga Loa shrugged like, it don't matter. It's like one eye, no eyes, man. I'll be all right. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Like Arn Anderson said to Undertaker, we know you're all man, but you need help. <laughs> so... Um, so L.A. Knight, he, he, he's walking the hall, he's cutting a promo, he let him going through the curtain and everything, he got his catchphrase in, and it's not piped in, man, he just, it's, he's, it's just awesome, I love every second of this, this kind of intro and talking from the right person is what gets me going for wrestling, that's, I was like, I'm here, you know. I'm like, now now I'm in my mood for wrestling. Now I can pick and choose what I want. I'm here. I'm there. I'm woke. I'm up. And then I was like, you know, I ain't going to watch the match anyway. You know, I, I didn't care to see it. L.A. Knight, yeah, I want to see him. But I, I don't want to see the enhancement guy he's going against. Because that's what that dude is. He's an enhancement guy. So during the match, um, Logan Paul, he tried to interfere, but he got knocked down. Knight won with his finish. Paul attacked him from behind. Knight turns it over, starts whooping up on him. He got super kicked, not foot jabbed. He got super kicked. And then double team beating him down, laying him laying in the ring. All right. You know, so well, left him laying in the ring, not laying him laying in the ring. So, okay, now we got tag team gauntlet tournament. Apollo Cruz and Baron Corbin versus Legado del Fantasma. And, or Legado, my bad. Um, Legado del Fantasma. And I'm like, okay, so you got the black job guy and then the returning skinnier kind of mid upper mid-card guy versus the, the enhancement team. And I was like, I don't know which one's going to lose this. You know, maybe it'll be a double knockout or double DQ or double count out something. Double pin, can't make your mind, so you just say, okay, y'all both lose, screw it. But no, nah, Apollo Crews and, and Corbin won, so that was all right. Barry gets the pin after a stalling complete shot, pretty cool. Then Apollo Crews and Baron Corbin versus the Street Profits. The Street Profits won with the Power Bomb Rear Age Crusher combination. Okay. Then the Street Profits versus Pretty Deadly. And I was like, okay, why is the epic? Jobber team coming out. These are supposed to be the top tag teams. And Legado del Fantasma, 
pretty deadly? No. No. If y'all feel better, different about those teams, talk to me. Put it down there in the comment section. Help me out. You know, help me out because I just want interest in seeing them. The Street Profits, I kept wanting to be interested, but I was like, eh. And so, and they weren't showing me too much. I was skipping anyway. I'll be honest with you, I was skipping. So the Street Profits, they won with the Doomsday Blockbuster. Okay, so they got more wins. I'm like, okay, so they are more than a mid-card team, the Street Profits. That's what this, those two wins told me. You got your two bottoms. Now you got your mid. Now the Street Profits versus the OC. So is that so I'm like, does that stand for Orange County or Original Club? Help me out on that. What does it stand for? You know, somebody put down in the comments section. Uh, but Dawkins, he rolls up Gallows for the pin. I was like, that's typical. All right. So y'all are now above mid. Y'all are now opening main event. Like if two matches are going to be in the main event, they would be the opening match of that main event. This, this is what every company do. All of them do this. Um, the Street Profits versus the Bloodline. I was like, okay, now the Street Profits have had short matches, but they've had matches nonetheless. So if they lose, they've got an out. And the Bloodline, although it's a new team per se, Jacob, he's no stranger to tag team. Tonga, Tama Tonga, no stranger to tag team. Um, and the way this, the way the tag teams were looking, even for the the the, the tag team title matches, um, where the titles had changed hands, I noticed that WWE has dropped their love for tag team wrestling even more than they did in the Attitude Era that made me even stop watching anyway. Um, but Jacob, he shouted that he loved the Tribal Chief. And so with, his, with that level of conviction, it makes me think that even if Roman Reigns does come back, that he would be loyal, Jacob, would, that is, would be loyal to Solo to a fault. But then I wonder, I wonder though, because he's saying Tribal Chief, that's what he's saying. So maybe he's loyal to the tribal chief, you know? Now I can't get all the names, but like um, in Black Panther, when that, the, the, the woman, the one that played Michonne, she says, I'm loyal to that throne no matter who sits in it. And you can tell she was in pain having to say it. So maybe that's where he is. But man, <laughs> I believe him. So Jacob, he won the match with a, a, a high diving, well, BME. I don't know it, what he might call it, but, you know, best moonsault ever. Uh, so I had to note that I can see, this, this is my note, I can see the magic of the Street Profits. I wasn't happy with the hype up by four uh, after the Topi Can Hero over the post. It's a great move very risky done safely but he got up and yelled like he was okay all powering up but then he's like oh i'm old i'm like come on dude but outside of that i think i'm liking this team you know i think uh zemo was a bit high on them just wishing they'd go back to a different name so i'm like okay maybe maybe it's not as as bad as i thought because i'd seen them before and i was like i ain't liking this but Street Profits, they won't call in that match. You know, WWE-wise, they are the more experienced team. But wrestling-wise, Jacob and Tom are the more experienced wrestlers. They, they was calling that match. Because Street Profits won't do a bunch of stupid that I had seen them do before. That's how I know who was also calling the match. Now, I didn't watch the women's tag team match okay the main event no it's not because it's women it's because i can't see where that's going and the teams are not even established they're not even standard they're just singles wrestlers doing things Nia and tiffany don't make sense at this point team up when both are after the same prize at SummerSlam, how can tiffany make take advantage of naya if 
she wins the belt. If Nia wins, Tiffany's going to take advantage how? You know, because don't that get boring? Don't you want to see something different, something unique? Instead of, you know, the, the, the person that just won the belt or defended the belt, now the person come in, cash in, beat them down just a little bit, and then get the win. I mean, that's smart, yeah. But I think it's best if done where it feels like, okay, this person's going to have the belt for a while. And I have never... Tiffany Stratton, I can tell that she's going to... She's a upper mid-card main event type in WWE's mind, but I haven't seen it yet. And her promos annoy the hell out of me. Um, and look, I wrote, they made Bailey squishy, so she's easily beatable by anyone at this point, except Nia. But in addition, she's got two back-to-back -back wins over Nia Jax. And being queen of the ring can't aid anything but a promised third loss. The fans seem to love Tiffany, so I can see that the title match being long and draining, Bailey winning and Tiffany cashing in and getting the belt. Okay, I just hit something. And I lost my spot. That was annoying. That was annoying. Um... Yeah, it's long draining match, Bailey winning and Tiffany cashing in, getting the belt, and then losing it at Survivor Series. That's one road they can take. So I was skipping. I hit play, and Nia came down on someone. I didn't see who it was, but her foot slipped. So all of her weight once again landed on the defender. I don't know who it was. I just saw dark tights and a foot. I think that's what I think it was a foot, maybe a head. I don't know. I was, I was just like, what the hell? I was just too busy being stunned at her carelessness. See, the problem is, most wrestlers that mess up, you can see that glint in their eye or something of their posture that they messed up. You can see something like that. Naya, for three mess ups that I've seen, she's not had that look or that posture. See, that's the scary part of it. No remorse, no care, no love. And it was the week before that when Bailey had called her out on it. And see, I didn't watch or listen to that promo. I was I heard that on a uh, 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 clip from Jim Cornette that aired this Sunday morning or afternoon, which have you. And I was like, oh, that was said. Okay, but yeah, I I just. I just I can't see too much with the women's division because they don't they they care as much for the women as they do for tag team. If they cared enough for the women's division, they would show enough work on their promos instead of the same old I am strong and I am now this person at this level and I don't care what you think about me. That is aggravating. Where's your personality? Where Where's your anger, your love, your passion? Where's the vigor? Where's the I want this at all costs? I'm tired of being, you know, denied. Something. Give me something. You know? I'm look, I'm sitting here begging for them to give me something with more passion than they talk with. Ugh. I don't know, maybe if I was getting paid to do it, I'd be like. Well, this is Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary, SmackDown-ish, because I, I guess I, getting paid does that. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to get up out of here. So this has been Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary, Friday Night SmackDown-ish, and I want you all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And with that, because later today, I will see you next time.